Hi guys and welcome to Aid's Workshop and this is going to be the Shed Extension Part 3. Now if you've watched Part 1 and 2 you'll know that the sort of main extension itself has been done now and that this Part 3 is going to be concerned with the internals, building a workbench, that all that sort of thing. Can I just say, after the Shed Extension Part 1 and Part 2, there have been loads and loads of new subscribers so I just want to say a big welcome to you all. Anyway, we've got that out of the way. Right, let's get on with it and do a bit more, uh, not my favourite sport, carpentry. So I cut a piece of timber, pre-drilled it, and it should Yes, it does. <laughs> Sometimes you're lucky. Mark the line at the height I want it. Now this timber is going to support basically what's going to be a kitchen worktop. Now the shed itself is on an angle running downhill that way because the concrete slab it's on is running downhill in that direction. But I do want to have, and much the same as I did the other end of the shed, I do want to have the worktops level. Um, you know, you put something down on it that's round and <laughs> it'll roll away otherwise. So yeah, I do want it level. So I've marked the line. Um, I don't know if it, yes, it does come into shot. You can see my bracing timber in the outside of the building here on the outside wall on the back. Um, the worktops are 28 millimetres thick. And if I put this side, and that is, yep, 28 millimetres. Put that side and I've marked a line there. This side will have to go lower down to suit, so I'll have a bit of a lip on the uh, outside, but I'm not worried about that. Um, and I think the first thing I'm going to do, as I said, I pre drilled the hole. I was, <laughs> have to check the drill was going, the, the chuck was going the right way. Nice hefty screw in the way. Okay. So I can simply put the level on there. And yeah, it's got to go down a little bit that end. Just checking my bubble. I haven't got one of those ones that goes beep. Or have I? Beep. No. <laughs> On the nose. Check my level. Yep. So that back rail now for the worktop to sit on, or the rear of the worktop to sit on, is dead level. So I'm going to whack a screw in the other end here, two into those centre uprights, and happy days. Just pull that piece of timber out of the way. So one this end. I can go in anywhere. Back wall's quite flat, it pulled in a couple of millimetres, this one's touching. And that now, well I can stand on that. So that rear bar is the rear support for the worktop. And as you can imagine, there's going to be another one in the front here. Somewhere here, I need to trim this one a little bit. Um, probably about 550 mil from the back edge, with it being a 600 mil worktop. So yeah, I'll mark a line, 550 mil. Uh, probably going to have to clamp this in position, and then I'll make some support legs for it. But I want to build a bit of a support underneath before I fit the worktop. So we'll look at that in a bit. Right, this should be a barrel of laughs. Oh. Oh. Get your hand out from underneath, it might help. Uh, all the way down here. Oh. Oh. That's roughly in position. So what I plan on doing is to hold it hard down against that level bar on the back, put the level across the top, and then put a couple of battens along both sides of the wall. Maybe... Um, it's going to be more than 50 mil back because what I want to do is screw this board to the end of the two battens when I put it in. So, I think what I'll do is level that up, 
mark it, cut some timber to go underneath the right length or an appropriate length to go on the side walls, screw them in position with the worktop level, then I can take the worktop away and continue building the rest of the frame. That's the plan anyway. Let's hope it works. That, uh, I'm having a bit of problem with the light from that window. Um, might have to play with my settings with the camera a bit in the future. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's plenty of light in here. I've got the light above the head here. Um, might have to tuck that away, you know, out of sight a bit to stop blasting the camera out, as it were. Oh, I haven't mentioned. Um, yeah, I've got a new light. Oh, that's the one. Is that the one that's coming? There's a new light here, a new light there and two further lights at the back of the shed so i've now got four of these tube lights or three of them i should say um as well as the one i always used to have above the lathe so i've doubled the amount of lighting in here even though i've only got that extra end but um as far as lighting in the videos goes i'll have to play with it as we go along we'll see how it goes as you can see i've got the back of the worktop clamped down on that rear rail which i've already fitted i've got the level on it there and it's moved. <laughs> Hold on. Just up a touch there. That is spot on. So I got my piece of timber. I decided on the length, 500 mil. Three screws pre-drilled in there, ready to roll. I'm going to dive underneath. Oh, well, I won't dive underneath, but I'm going to place myself underneath the worktop. Hold that up firm. And just put the front screw in, double check my level. Yeah, it's good. I put the other two in. Oh, I get too old for this. <laughs> I think I need a new bit on the end of my screwdriver. It's slipping far too regularly now, so I'll put a new bit in and finish the screws off. So I've done the left and right hand side, and we've got basically a flat level U-shape frame now um, that the worktop can sit on. So now, let me just point you somewhere where I can get that from behind the camera. I'm going to screw a piece of timber across the full length into the end of these right across from one to the other keeping it level again now as you can see i'm uh, chock a block i've got stuff everywhere in here um normally i clear my work in area uh, to give me a bit of space to uh, swing a cat as it were but uh, it's chucking it down with rain outside so i haven't really got the luxury of getting rid of anything out of the way so yeah i've already cut the piece of timber for the front i just got to pre-drill it now and screw it on that end, screw it on that end, and we've basically got a square. Um, it's going to want some support legs and what have you, and we'll look into that as part of the next procedure. Okay, so I've got the front bar on. Um, two screws either end. Um, can't see it's behind the worktop. Right, so I'm thinking to split this into three uh, and put two legs, you know, one sort of this area, one this area, that sort of idea. Um, it's 1.680 long, so in my reckoning, divided by 3 is 560. So I'll just mark a centre line there at 560. I'll do the same from that end. I'm not sure whether this is in shot or not. 560. Double check I'm not being uh, daft. New it's 560. There we go. So, now I could cut, where are we, bring you into shot, I could cut a leg that fits perfectly from there down to the floorboard. And as it happens, I can see the screw line, I'm pretty much above a joist, which is handy. Uh, I'm just slightly offset, probably an inch, but I'm still above a joist. What I was thinking to do was rather than try and cut a piece of timber exactly the right length, because you know you get a mill here, mill there, it goes in, what have you, it'll spring that much but I could be pushing this out of flat. So my plan is to screw a leg that's a bit longer, almost level with the top. I'll cut it, you know, a rule measurement, almost level with the top. Two screws into the leg there, and I'll put a little buttress on the, uh, on the leg 
just to support so that it's, you know, it's this sort of four screws holding the support on the front. Because any weight that I put on here uh, is more likely to be on the front end here than on the back. And the back is supported pretty strongly in four places all the way along. So I can't see that back moving at all. The worktop is inherently fairly strong. It's not going to flex that much. But yeah, a weight on the front over time, especially, you know, it, it could bow. So yeah, I'm going to put a leg there and a leg there down onto the floor. I'll probably bracket them with some L brackets onto the floor. And I'll screw them through the front here to screw the leg onto the back. Place, get a G clamp on there. Whoop. <laughs> Engineer doing carpentry, use a G clamp. <laughs> but yeah, clamp that on there, square it up, get it central, um, square it up with a level, and then screw it in. One down, one to go. So I've cut a couple of little buttresses. Um, where's the other one? Uh, there is two. Yeah, there's the other one. <laughs> Left hand and a right hand. Um, and they're going to sit up under there. I should be able to just... I pre-drilled them. Make sure it's up tight. There we go. And we've got another screw. Here we go. Is this square? Yeah. Just as a bit of extra support. Um, in a downward direction. So yeah, that should keep it solid. I'll do exactly the same on the other one with this block of wood. And then we'll think about screwing the bottom into place because those legs could get bashed in the bottom there. So I think you want a bit of support behind them, perhaps an angle bracket. So just pull some angle brackets out, um, 90 degree bracket, as you know, simple angle bracket. Um, two of those, one on each leg, obviously it's hard for me to film, but they're going to go around the back like that, just to stop any uh, impact or movement on the bottom of those legs, you know, if I come in with a lump of bar falls on it or what have you, or I kick it or what have you. So, yeah, we're going to lock that in position using an angle bracket. Put you on handheld a minute, but yeah, bracket there. And a bracket there and I leveled the legs up um, this way before I screwed them in so try not to jerk it about too much yeah there's the two legs in place holding it all upright so I placed the worktop I didn't mention it just now on top just to get it out of my way and it's yeah stood up right in front of the window here um, just to give me a bit of space to room but it's just balancing on its shelf um, to screw the worktop down on the framework here, I've got these um, fix-it blocks. I've used them quite a lot doing, you know, kitchens and odd bits and bobs. Um, and yeah, let me just get one out. It's basically just a little 90 degree block. It's got a screw hole one way and two screws the other. And let me just bring you down. So my plan is, at various uh, places around the worktop, to screw them on here on the inside, um, two screws into the framework leaves a screw hole in the upwards direction. And I can basically, if I screw them all on now, leaving them just below surface, leave a couple of mil below, and then when I do the screw up, it'll pull it all down tight. You don't want to try and aim for flush because if you're a bit high, it'll always be high. So I just aim for a couple of mil below, screw them on, um, you know, good amount of them, they'll probably be 15 odd around the outside of this. And then when I put the worktop down in position and clamp it down, uh, it'll just be one screw straight up through the, the you know, the pre-drilled hole in the block. One screw straight up through. Happy days. Make it easy when I'm walking upside down and trying to drill screws in above my head. So, yeah, um, I like these things. I've used them loads and loads and loads. Uh, never had them fail, so going to go for it. Yeah, just a couple of mil below. Just locate it like that.
I'll mark a second one in. Right, so yeah, I'm gonna have to take that worktop back out the way again now to give me access to the back. Uh, and then the final job is put the worktop on and then it'll be, uh, yeah, literally I've got these inch and a half screws straight up through into the worktop and that'll hold it all down and clump it all into place. So I've just got the worktop precariously balanced where it is. And as you can see, I've got four across the back, four across the front, to that end, to that end. And the final job, Why isn't that? I see why. There's a knot in this. Okay, there we go. Down level and touching all the way around. Well, that's a fairly good sign. Well, that's it in place. Just got to get underneath now and screw up through all those plastic blocks to locate it in position. Now, as you can see, I've got a big gap at the back here, and obviously anything on this bench is going to fall down the gap, and that would get irritating very quickly indeed. I'm not in shot there. Hello. <laughs> I have in my loft a couple of packs, perhaps, of laminate flooring and loads of offcuts. Well, if laminate flooring is good enough to walk on, um, it's not going to be walked on, but at the surface wise, I think it would probably do the job as a backstop to box in this area here. So I think I'm going to recycle that laminate flooring to just to box that off. While we're on the subject, I've been asked, let me just bring that camera up a bit. There we are, I look a bit like less like Quasimodo now bent over trying to get into the camera, right? Okay. Yeah, I've been asked about insulation in the workshop am i going to insulate it i haven't thought too deeply about it but the answer to that is not at this stage if i find i have problems going forward then i'll think about it i know this would be the ideal time to do it uh it, but it's just the cost at the moment obviously i've had a bit of, big expenditure with the uh with the extension to start with i'm hoping to get a milling machine sooner rather than later and obviously uh any insulation or what have you is going to bite into that budget um, yeah, I could get a couple of rolls of fiberglass and whatever, but I don't really want fiberglass in here. Polystyrene, flammable again, I know the, the timber of the shed is. Um, but no, at this stage I'm not going to insulate it. Um, if I have problems going forward, as time goes on, I may retrofit some insulation in the shed here. Um, it doesn't get stupidly cold in the winter. Um, coldest temperatures in Pembrokeshire here, you know, if, if in the middle of the coldest night it gets to minus three, that's about it. Um, heat is probably the biggest problem, um, but heat's no problem. You just turn the fan on, open the door, happy days. So, uh, yeah, I know insulation would help with, uh, you know, rusting of, of bits and bobs and what have you, but uh, I do have a dehumidifier, and uh, if I start struggling in, you know, midwinter when it is a lot of moisture in the air, then I'll just uh, run the dehumidifier in here overnight, probably. But, yeah, that's it. That's the answer on the insulation story. And now we do have, or will have, when I've screwed it down tidy, um, a worktop or a workbench in the new end of the shed. I don't know when it comes out, but for those of you that are curious, um, we're level that way. And I try and keep the bubble in the same place. Can you still see the bubble? We're level that way as well. I don't know, is the bubble still in shot? No. Hang on a second. Yeah, we're level that way as well. So, happy days on having a level workbench anyway. <laughs> Hang on. <All> right. <laughs> well, here we are, guys. It's not moving at all. <laughs> and I'm probably closer to the 200 pounds than I am to 150, let's put it that way. Happy days, nice and strong. Well, now that we've got the workbench in place, uh, thankfully I can get off my knees with a chop saw on the floor. Um, they're getting a bit sore, so I've got the chop saw up on the bench. Now, I have got another chunk of worktop. Um, decisions time. Um, I've been thinking in there somewhere, or alternatively, in the far corner over there. Um, I'm thinking that's my sort of going to put a little stool in there and I could do my sort of, uh, you know, bits and pieces over in that corner. Um, but I've got a, a further plan 
this space here on the left hand side as you look at it is sort of dead space between the the back of the door and the bench so i think i'm going to put it there and it'll give me a bit more sort of wall bench area in this area which otherwise would be sort of dead area so um yeah i'm going to build a little frame in here to sit the spare bit of countertop on it's about 400 mil wide something like that so yeah i got the chop saw I've just marked out the three pieces of wood to make my frame here on the left hand side. Um, chop those out and as you can see I don't know whether you can uh, pick that up odd bits and pieces to go in there I'm going to screw that one to the existing as a nip and go from there so we're getting somewhere now um, we've got the back plate in the wall plate front plate leg in position haven't screwed the bottom down yet again I'm going to put an angle plate in the bottom um, picked up a packet of these uh, middle aisle of a local supermarket uh, what are they 60 by 60 by 40 two and a half mil thick 90 degree brackets um, so I'm going to stick one on the bottom of here but yeah that packet in the supermarket I forget what I was paying for the last sort of pack I bought from a you know uh, hardware shop uh, but one pound fifty in a supermarket so yeah I couldn't pop that I thought we'll have those I'm going to be using those so yeah screw the bottom down uh, I'll just put the level on it level, make sure it's plumb screw the bottom down in its right place and then you can see I've used the plastic blocks again um, put the worktop on, screw it up from the underneath, and that'll be in place. I did have to, uh, I've done a trial fit of this, I did have to notch out the corner just to uh, avoid the end wall of the shed. Um, but yeah, I'm getting there now. So I've just put the bracket on the bottom of the leg, and the worktop goes on here. Now, you'll notice that I've got nothing in this area here. That's fairly deliberate. Um, let me just place that in position. I'm going to have a bracket under here that swings out to give me a shelf. That will become evident as we go along. The reasoning for it, let's put it that way. So the idea is, you've got a folding bracket under there. I release it from underneath. I haven't done the release mechanism yet. And it'll fold up there and I've got to do a little mechanism to keep it level like that. And yeah, the plan is that the little belt sander grinder, which is going to be modified um, I'm going to put a wire wheel on there, that new wire, wire wheel of mine, because I've got a grinder opposite on the other side of this one. And this belt sander leaning back like that, I've never sort of liked it. I'm going to modify it to bring this upright. And obviously, when it all folds down and under, in the state it's in at the moment, that would stick out in my way from underneath. But if it were upright, then obviously this belt sander bit would be just pointing straight down so yeah and it would be back in here somewhere so yeah that's the plan so i um, drilled the four mounting holes in it um, ready and i got coach bolts washers and that's that sort of idea to bolt it down onto this bracket um, so i need to make a, a staying mechanism now i might have a bit of a bar which lives in here to hold that in place and you know which can be tucked back in there and when i fold it up into there perhaps a pin in through the side here just to lock it so it stays up so that's the plan with that yeah so i just pulled the top off again to do a bit of work on the underside so when it's stowed in this area this end it'll fold up and round a little turn buckle and it's going to be locked away in the in the stowed position and that was simply whoop, little turn my block screwed on the underside and a little turn buckle to lock it in place um yeah keep it simple i say so just to demonstrate it in position, I put my hand underneath, I can bring the uh, grinder out into position. Um, I haven't done the, the locking up position uh, device yet, um, but yeah, I can simply stow it underneath, turn the buckle, and it's locked in position away, um, keeping the room in the shed. Well, I finally got myself a sticker board. It's one of those dry wipe uh, magnetic jobs. Um, happy days. Cheapest chips, I think, four pound Wilkinson's. 
the temptation to put it up somewhere is absolutely overwhelming because I want to get my board up, stickers on it, that sort of thing. Um, I don't know how I'm going to lay the shed out yet, so, um, well, you know, not, I haven't sort of finalised anything. But, as luck would have it, it works out that with a little shove, it fits in there perfectly with no fastness. So for the time being, the little magnetic dry wipe board is going there. So I need to get some stickers on it now, but the only problem is, if I put it somewhere else and I turn it 90 degrees, all the stickers will be the wrong way around. So I think I'll, uh, I'll reserve... Uh, going any further than getting it out of the way and pushing it into there for now. I did say I was going to put some uh, laminate board on here um, to box this in to stop stuff falling down the back of the shelf. I think I'll have to go up into the loft to get some of it and just see how feasible it is. So I've been messing about with the, uh, <laughs> the laminate flooring on the wall here. I didn't quite have enough to completely do it up to sort of window level. Um, so I sort of hummed and hard and decided well to put a couple of shelves in into the wall I mean I was loath to lose that extra space actually um, I'm planning on putting a toolbox up that end at some stage um, so yeah because I didn't quite have enough if I did it this way with two pockets with shelves in them um, I had enough timber to do the job so that's another little job done let's shall we say well, I think that's about it for the shed extension, guys. Part three, done and dusted. The bench is all in position now, as you can see, um, ready to accept whatever I put on me. Um, I still undecided whether the milling machine is going to go there or up at the other end. I'm, I'm aiming towards the milling machine going where the old workbench was and making this into sort of uh, office space with the light and what have you for, you know, filing, finishing, fitting, that sort of idea. Anyway, that's for another video on another day. Once again, thanks to all the new subscribers for clicking that button. If you haven't pushed it already, don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching guys and we'll see you all very soon.